Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome and magical episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Magical is the appropriate word here. We have Mark Elliott on the show, the wonderful, wonderful voice of mm -hmm. Disney. Yes. And you guys are going to love the show. This is special, Chuck. Yes. I don't want to waste a second. We're going there right now. Guys, our guest is one of the most iconic and beloved promo and trailer voices in our industry. The minute he opens his mouth, you're going to know who he is. He has done all the classic Disney movies, trailers, promos, commercials. You've heard him on CBS and Fox. He's incredible. We are so honored. I am like goosebumpy. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to get buzzed with the magical storyteller, Mark Elliott. Uh, Mark thank Elliott. you, Stacey. We're thank you, so Chuck. Excited. Welcome back to Buzz Weekly, my friend. Thank you. Oh thank my you. gosh. It's you know? great to be here. This is this is wonderful. Thank this you. Is, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, it sure is nice to have you, man. Thank you for taking uh, your valuable time yes. and coming out and speaking with Time's us. Time's not all that of the, valuable. All man. of the peeps <laughs> out there, you know, you have you have friends all over this world, mm -hmm. and everybody's always been like, "When are you guys going to have Mark?" Mark Elliott on the show. When are you guys going to have Mark Elliott? Well, because people come here. Mm -hmm. This seems to be like one of the places where, you know, people, actors come here and they share things about how they got started and little bits of their life that they don't normally know about. So they kind of get to know you on a little bit of, of a personal level as well. Yeah. So they which get excited is, which about is, that. that. That's yeah. good fun. You yeah. know? Absolutely, it's, man. Um, so uh, I think we're going to get right into it, right? Let's go. So take us back, Mark. Um, I know, we know that you started back in, in radio. So so let us know how that came about and what you did in radio and then how tr that transitioned into voiceover. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, radio is right. I started mm -hmm. in my hometown in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, at a radio station called, I swear, K-Pig. <laughs> K-Pig <laughs> 1 Iowa, <laughs> Iowa. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so I started at K-Pig. Big, uh, working from 11 at night till 7 in the morning. That was my air shift. Eight hours wow. on the air, for which I took home $67.50 wow. a week. But Don't spend that it all was in 1957. Yeah, so back you know, then that was like a million that was, dollars yeah, that, was, that was a pretty good chunk yeah. of change for yeah. that for that yeah. time. Uh, so then I worked I worked at, K at K-Pig. I went across the street to KCRG in Cedar Rapids, went to KIOA in Des Moines, went to uh, uh, WKYC, in, in, no, uh, yeah, WKYC in Cleveland, uh, went to CKLW, in uh, Toronto or in, in uh, uh, Ontario, mm -hmm. and then I went to uh, uh, KFRC in San Francisco. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And then down here to KHJ. Down wow. here. Yeah. You know, actually, uh, it sounds like I did a lot of moving around, yeah. but I, I didn't really. I mean, radio is an itinerant industry, mm -hmm. and people don't generally spend a whole lot of time at one station. Uh, they're always kind of, you know, checking out the, 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 the trade magazines for yeah. available mm -hmm. openings and looking mm -hmm. for something better to go to. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just this wonderful, kind of natural, serendipitous progression from. Um, good to better to better yeah. to best mm -hmm. and and uh, wound up working at KHJ which at that point in time was one of the top two stations in the country yeah, um, yeah. and so uh, uh, that worked out very well uh, then actually then things got a little sad uh, because I got fired at KHJ Aww. and I went to work at Kiss Radio here in, next in, time you tell the story just say you quit I, I left yeah <laughs> he we, left yeah we left it Nobody was fired. Right. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> no I, they, they, they fired that me happened. Often. I want the I mean, well. It does. It, what, no, what it does, you know. And this was one of those cases. I was working for a guy that was a very good friend of mine. He left, did yeah. not get fired. He left, and the new guy that came in thought, you know, he's uh, Elliot's one of Ted's guys. Uh, I don't want to have to work with that. And mm. so they just showed me the door, and I went to work for Kiss uh, here in Los Angeles. Uh, Kiss AM at the time. This Kiss AM. Yeah, back in the day, okay. uh, and then back to KHJ, and then finally. I just got kind of tired of radio. I'd been doing it for 20 years. This yeah. was 77. Mm -hmm. I started in 57. Mm -hmm. And I just got tired of it. Yeah. So, um, Did you get tired of making up radio names? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should we go through my names? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. My first, my first job, I was John Harrison, which actually mm -hmm. is my first and middle given name. Okay. At birth, that was my first and middle name. I was going to say, it's very John, distinguished. Yeah. John Harrison. Uh, then I became Sandy Shore. Sandy Shore! <laughs> That's my personal that favorite. That was for the pop station. <laughs> That's right. Sandy Shore. Then I was Buddy Harrison. Then I was Ed Mitchell. 
Then I was Mark Elliott, but with a C. Okay. <laughs> and that was in San Francisco. And then I came down here and became Mark with a K. And and that's, I mean, those were my names. Wow. After, yes. And it, it was great for getting away from people I owed money to. I you know? bet. They oh, my gosh. And they you're like your me. own identity theft. You just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's a question. <laughs> why, why do you have to change your name when you go from station to station? Is that? Well, in a couple of cases, I was going to, okay, when I left uh, KF, or, uh, CKLW in Ontario and I, and I went to KFRC in, in San Francisco, I'd been using the name Ed Mitchell. The original Ed Mitchell was from San Francisco. Oh. And they had given me that name because they had a jingle, Ed Mitchell, CKLW. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they gave me that name and I couldn't be that name again because there'd already been that one guy there. I see. That was that was, that the was case. That, yeah. In other cases, I mean, it was just a matter of the management of the station wanted to kind of put their the thumbprint on me. On yeah. yeah. Now, know? did they give you the name, or yeah. did you come? They did. Yeah. Wow. Oh, With wow. the exception of Sandy Shore. Sandy Shore was a, a Sandy Shore was a, a situation. No, that's not true. Sandy Shore was a that was a committee decision that mm. I wasn't involved in. Yeah. But uh, Mark Elliott, strangely enough, when I went to work at KFRC in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, I had uh, been traveling around. It, I arrived here on a Sunday morning, or in, in San Francisco on a Sunday morning, driving around with Charlie Van Dyke and Don Kelly and Ted Atkins all day so that I was going on the air that night for my first show. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to get the feel of, of San Francisco on a Sunday, and it was wonderful. I mean, gosh, I love that city. I yeah. love that yeah, city. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. But uh, uh, so it, it, we'd been driving all day, and on occasion, you know, we were knocking back a, What's that? an Irish coffee or, oh, okay. or whatever. An Irish coffee! <laughs> but, uh, Mark wasn't so, the one driving, I, though. I, no, I was not. By the end uh, of the my day... My camera guy knows all about Irish <laughs> coffee, by the way. <laughs> Pass knows. <Yeah. laughs> all right, we got to talk. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so by the end of the day, frankly, I was not in real good shape to go on the radio for my oh, first show no. in San Francisco. They had given me the name Johnny Barron when I got to town and okay. I hated it. I just hated that name and I said, you guys, I don't want to be, Johnny Barron sounds like slick back hair yes. and a little pencil mustache, yeah. pencil yeah. mustache, you know, it just didn't, I said, I don't like that name. They said, yeah, but you know, the the the, 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 the guys that consult the station said, that's the name they want you to have. Mm. I, I don't like that name. And I'm the one that's got to live with it. So we were arguing the whole day and we were coming up with alternative names just in case we could come up with something great. And it was things like Mark Hopkins yeah, after mm. the hotel. Yeah. You know, uh, it was, uh, uh, we were, then we got really silly with things like Charlie Chocolate and Vic Vanilla. And, and we got all these, oh but at gosh. one point in time, somebody said, hey, how about Mark Anthony? And I said, that's a kind yeah. of a good name. It's got some nobility to yeah, it. It's exactly. got, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a serious, mm -hmm. hardcore name. And I Mark thought, Anthony. Uh, that's right. This right. is Mark Anthony on KFRC. You know, yeah, I right. Would, yeah, I right. wouldn't yeah. change yeah. their station. So anyway, they said. <laughs> so so Ted said, well, you know, I, I don't like that. That's too obvious. It's 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 just a name that people are going to go. No, he's not. No, yeah. he's not. So uh, we stopped at a at a hamburger store on my a hamburger shop on my way down to the station to do my first show. And uh, again, I was not completely mm. good at that point yeah. in time. My and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm leaning up against the jukebox while Ted gets coffee and, and hamburgers. And I look down and there's a record by uh, Petula Clark. And underneath that was a record by Mama Cass. Mm -hmm. So Mama Cass Elliot, Petula Clark, Clark Elliot. Hey, hey, hey. Clark Elliott. And so I went over to Ted and I said, I, 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 I got a great name. <laughs> and he said, what, what, what's the name? And I said, Clark Elliott. And he said, I'm sorry. I said, Clark Elliott. And he said, Clark Elliott? And I said, yeah. He said, it's fine, but you can't say it. It's, it's, you can't it does, say it. It doesn't come out of your mouth well. <laughs> <laughs> that's because I just had an Irish coffee. Exactly. Clark Elliott. That's right. Clark like 20th Elliot. Irish yeah, that's... coffee of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, we finally, so we finally decided that uh, uh, we had thought about Mark Anthony. We thought about uh, you know Clark Elliott. Mark Elliott. That, that, that's work. It for, yeah, uh, the yeah, L yeah, thing yeah. does it all. Well, oh, no, it is a little clunky. It it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it really is just a bit. Even so, sober. It's... Exactly. Yeah. So on that Sunday night in San Francisco, Mark Elliott was born.
Wow. I need to know, how do you spell Elliot? Because you see it with one L, two True. T's, two and L's, two T's. And the interesting thing is, most people spell it with two L's and one T, mm -hmm. if they haven't seen it. I'm two L's and two T's. Yeah. Okay. And I have since changed my name legally. Okay. So, two. yeah, so Mark Elliot. Oh. <laughs> no, no, he's changed it to two, L, two L's and two T's. Well, that is new. <laughs> well, I will tell you what my name was at birth, and you will see why that change was necessary. My mm -hmm. name was John Harrison Frick. Junior. Frick Junior. Yeah. And you can't say Frick on the radio. You can't? Well, you well, shouldn't. Serious I mean, radio. you open yourself. <laughs> well, today you, you open can. Your, yeah, today you can. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Howard Stern back in the day, no. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you open yourself. I, I just didn't want the abuse. I know. I hear <laughs> you. Know? you. I Understood. got it in high school anyway. Understood. So, yeah. Understood. That's wow. so awesome. Okay. So w you were um, one of the iconic voices in promos um, the 80s the 90s for CBS for Fox what for, for promos and trailers what was kind of the popular style uh, for the reads at that time because now you hear the real non-announcer conversational what, exactly. what was it like for you that it was the the opposite of that mm -hmm. you know it was that that real big kind of kind of approach uh, and what was always fun to me when I was doing CBS particularly and doing like a full night's lineup would be to try to change each one so that each one sounded just a little bit different yeah. than the mm. one before it. So if you were going from, you know, uh, one day at a time, a comedy, and you're going to Cagney and Lacey, you know, you you do the little you, you twist. Twist it mm. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you just so you do the little twist. Captured a little bit of the vibe of the exactly. show. Exactly. As a matter of fact, somebody gave me a coffee cup. A friend of mine gave me a coffee cup, and all that it said on it was... Then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that became that fast. sums it, would, it up. That's right. It would. It yeah. would just. That was your pivot. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you then, yeah. Was your pivot. Yeah. That's I right. remember those. They, they don't really do those they anymore. Don't no, do they those. don't do the. the I, I don't hear full night lineups yeah, anymore. They I don't even hear have, combo lineups. No. Well, now they'll do like you know a new Mike and Molly followed by a, yeah. you know, they, they But they don't have that wonderful you know. The, exactly. Yeah, with the big yeah. changes. The drama into the comedy or vice versa. Yeah, I right. loved those. That's me right. too. Me too. They were really a story. Well, and and there's a funny funny story about that. At the time you that uh, give us the story. <laughs> at the time that uh, National Lampoon uh, came out with uh, uh, Animal House, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the the networks tried to follow that with their own kind of racy, edgy sort of collegiate stuff. Yep. None of it worked. It was all trash. None of it worked. And there was one that CBS had, and frankly, I don't even remember the name of the show at this at this moment, but it was it was one of those it was one of those shows. Mm -hmm. And Sunday, uh, uh, Leif Erickson helps Jimmy Night uh, Beach Party Blowout on California Fever. California there Fever was go. the name of the show. Okay, all right. So, Very so, good. <laughs> so they asked. So they asked, "Can you do drama? Because there's a movie of the week on after after California Fever, and can you do like a, a little a, give us a little edge?" And I said, "Yeah, I think I can." So I, I, I looked, I looked at the script and I thought, man, who, who paired this up? Who put this yeah, schedule? Yeah. Scheduled this? So it was uh, uh, then Jimmy McNichol helps uh, Leif Erickson and his friends with a beach party blowout on California Fever. Then it's Death Car on the Freeway. <laughs> that was the name of the movie, Death Car on the Freeway. Wow! And, and I did it. I did it really, really yeah, handy. Yeah, yeah. Thinking oh they're God. gonna laugh. Yeah. They're gonna and laugh. they were like, "That's great." And they they did. That's exactly it. what happened, Chuck. They just they came back in and they said, "Dude, that was exactly <laughs> what we wanted." And I thought, "Oh, I get it. I get it." And the little cartoon light bulb went mm -hmm. on over my head. I thought, yeah. "This is funny. This isn't." <laughs> 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 so, so oh, that was that was gosh. a little a little instant education that I got that night. That and, was you know. so great. That man. is, is that that really cool. So oh listen, hold on. I want to go back <laughs> a, a little bit because so you gave us your, the story about your the radio and right. and, and how right. that all happened, and then Mark Elliott was born. But I want to know how you actually. <clears throat> when was the first time that you actually did an actual voiceover job for TV? Uh. It was your, your 1977. First intro, right into the, the big voiceover world. Yeah, 1977. I was dating a girl who was a uh, hairstylist. And uh, she came home one night and said that she had met this guy in the salon that day. He had just walked in off the street. And uh, she said, uh, uh, his name was Chris Arnold. Chris and, Arnold. Uh, yeah, and she said, um, uh, 
Chris wants you to call him. He works for a company called Kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. And they do these coming attractions things. We mm -hmm. didn't even know that they were called yeah, trailers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? right, they right. do coming these the things you see, yeah, mm -hmm. the things you see in theaters. And and he wants you to call him. So I called him the next day, and and he said, uh, God, he said you, your girlfriend ought to be an agent. He said she is ah, relentless. Nice. She is tenacious. He said I told her I got no place for you. We've got guys. We use Casey Kasem. We use Danny Dark. We use you know we've got we've got uh, all the Brad Crandall, Ernie Anderson. We've got all of these people that we used whether we're doing a comedy or a drama or mm -hmm. a, a you know, horror movie or or a western or whatever. Yeah. We've got a guy. So he said, I, I just, I'm sure you're good, but I don't have any place for you. And I said, I get it. I, if, if it's okay with you, I'll just call you from time to time and see if, it's, uh, see if anything opens up. And he said, yeah, do that. Do that. Well, I started calling him like three times a week. <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> did. And to his credit, he would always take my call. You know, oh, he would always take my God. call and he'd Who be laughing. Who would take your call, Mark? <laughs> but he'd be laughing. He'd pick up the phone. He'd go, no, <laughs> not yet. Time to time, not every <laughs> other day. <laughs> Tuesday, I don't have anything. Oh my gosh. So then finally, he called me one day and he said, all right. I think I'm doing two uh, two new projects. And he said, I think you're going to be right for one of them. One of them was a movie called The Turning Point. And that was a, a ballet movie yes. with, uh, yeah, with uh, yeah. Uh, Anne Bancroft. Mm -hmm. and, and Shirley MacLaine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he said, and the other is Smokey and the Bandit, a movie wow. with, uh, yeah. So wow. he said, well, if you'll come over to uh, 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 SSI Studios on, on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, he said, come over after you get off the air. And he said, I'd like to hear you read on him. So I went over, I, I read for both, uh, actually an actor, by the name of Richard Basehart got the uh, uh, got the campaign for uh, uh, the, the ballet movie, which I wasn't real crazy about mm. doing anyway. But yeah. I got Smokey and the Bandit, nice. so that was the oh, first God. one that I got, and it of course turned that out to be huge. That was your first one. That wow. was my first one. Wow! And while we're working on that, they came to me and they said. We got this director who's making us nuts, just driving us crazy. He can't decide how he wants to promote. If you'll work with us on spec, when he makes his mind up on what he wants, what he wants, we'll we'll see that you get a piece of the action. Right. I said, okay. So we started working literally seven days a week, oh, trying gosh. to do. He couldn't decide where he wanted a comedy, whether he wanted an adventure, whether he wanted it dark, whether he wanted it light, whether he wanted it romance. He just couldn't decide. And finally, we hit on what it was that George Lucas wanted for Star Wars. Mm. And and <laughs> that was I didn't wow. do the, I didn't do the radio campaign for that I did I did the I mean the TV campaign I did the radio mm -hmm. campaign yeah. for that uh, and then after that I did a movie called The Goodbye Girl yeah. uh, and so those three were all huge movies yes. Yes. huge movies no thanks to me but oh my gosh did yeah. the doors open right so you, know? you were probably like radio <laughs> what the heck was, well, I, was I doing for radio no, no, for all right. those years <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly this was here all this did time. your oh girlfriend get a little you know, something. Little payment? I've told her. I've told little her payback. since. I mean, she's long gone. She's living with her husband in Kentucky or someplace. But, <laughs> yeah. but I have said to her, you know, you because she really did. She really believed. Yeah. She was your early manager. She was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. She was just, you know, like get out there, try it, try it. Wow. We watched a television show one night, and there was a disc jockey out here who was uh, uh, who, who was hosting this this uh, TV show, and we watched the show, and I looked at it, and I thought, boy. He didn't do a very good job. And Sheila said, "Call, call the, call the station, <laughs> call the station. Tell them you're available. Tell them you're, I tell said, them you're available." I said, "Sheila, they won't." Sheila care. is my kind of girl. <laughs> oh my god, hi, Sheila. <laughs> yeah, Sheila no is awesome. Yeah. I hope she watches this thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh Her phone's gosh. gonna be ringing off the hook. I'll Sheila, can you help know. me? That's right. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah. That so is, I called and they you said, did. I called and they said, "Let's talk." And I got oh the and I got. It was a show called Calendar on Channel Five. And it was on for about two years. So it was, it was, you know, one of the few times, one of the rare times in my life when I get a little assertive, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I pursue something with a little bit more energy because generally I figure if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I'll float along with the stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of my approach to life. But boy, once in a while, when you step out of that and you go, hey, me. Yeah. Over know, here. Me. Yeah. 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 Pay attention. Listen. Pay attention. They do. Wow. Yeah. So how did the Disney thing come into play here? The Disney thing came into play uh, when uh, a, a, a very wonderful man, oh dear, dear man, I love him to pieces, Craig Murray, uh, was working for Disney at the time, and they were re-releasing, oh man, wouldn't you think I'd know, it was either Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty. 
I think it might have been Cinderella. They were re-releasing it theatrically, yeah. mm-hmm. and so uh, Craig called, and by that time I had done a lot of a lot of uh, uh, trailers and things, so he knew that I was aware of how trailers were done. Yeah. So he called and he said, you know, you want to try this, and I said I'd love it, and from that point on, that was 1977, and I did uh, all the Disney product uh, until 19. 19- 99 it's been no even later than that 2001 yeah you know so i mean it just it it just worked out great it really did and and I, you know you think you look back over your shoulder and you think about decisions that were made and paths that were chosen yeah. and all that sort of thing that for me is like the defining moment in my life of not course. just my career yeah. but in my life yeah. because it did give me this identity which Thank you, thank you, thank you. It continues to this day. I was people say, remember you. You are still that. Yeah, people yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and and I mean, it, it could have gone. I could have been like the voice of the Playboy Channel or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just wouldn't yeah. have been the same no, thing. No, it would be a little it just, different. Yeah, it just wouldn't have been. So I mean, your just, fan base would be different. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was just very fortuitous. Yeah, very. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was just very fortuitous that 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 was the direction it happened to go, mm-hmm. and. A couple of years ago, uh, uh, I did. A, I was in a movie called In a World. Yes. Uh, That's which, right. Yeah, which was uh, a lot of fun to do. But when they did the uh, the screening at uh, at USC, uh, they they interviewed Lake Bell, who was the star and the mm-hmm. the, uh, the uh, dr- director and writer of the movie. And they interviewed her with a Q and A after the after the thing. Well, I was there with Joe Cipriano and Mark Grau, mm-hmm. uh, who were the other two guys that were in the in the movie from yeah. the voiceover business. And the guy that was interviewing her said, you know, did you actually have any people in the movie who were actually involved in voiceover? And she said, yes, three, and they're all right here. And he said, hey, guys, he said, well, you know, would you give us a sample of what it is that we would know you for? So they handed the mic to, to, to Mark Grau, and Mark doesn't have, like, a standing, you know, standing thing that he has ever done. Yeah. So he said, you know, you wouldn't know me. Just take it for, take it, take my yeah, word for it. I've worked. I, I've worked. Yeah. yeah. And so he handed it to <laughs> Joe. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I'm out there. So he handed it to Joe. And Joe, of course, did The Simpsons. Yes. And, and Sunday on an all-new Simpsons. Exactly. Yeah. And and the audience went, "Hey, I know that guy." Yes. And then he handed it to me, and we were all sitting in like the second row from the front of the theater. So I turned around, and the theater was full, and it was almost all college-age kids yeah. who are right in that mm-hmm. zone for me, right? Yeah. Who who have that real memory? And I turned around and I said, "Well, I said I." think you might remember this, and I would hope your heart beat a little faster the first time you heard me say, coming this summer to a theater near you, Walt Disney's The Lion King. And they just went nice. berserk. Wow. Sandy was there, and Sandy said, did you oh. see their faces? Yeah. She said their jaws just dropped. She said it was... And I just thought, you know... I don't work a lot anymore, and I just thought if this is it for me, it doesn't get any better than oh, yeah. that. It is it timeless. Doesn't, yeah, it, it just it just doesn't get any better. Yeah. I was shopping one time. I was in a I was in a store buying uh, uh, some baby clothes for some friends of mine. Had some it. baby clothes, Mark. <laughs> I don't think we want well, to hear about why. that. <laughs> but there were two Mark's high raising girls. a child here. Uh, yes, I am. Yes, and, uh, why he doesn't have know, time. To... This this is I guess this is the place that I had, I copped to that. <laughs> that this, there you go. You know, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I hadn't I hadn't worked for a little while, but these girls, two teenage girls, were working in there, and one and one of the girls said, "You have a really nice voice. Do you sing?" Mm. And I said, "No, can't carry a tune." I said, "No, I don't sing." And they said, "But your voice is." You know, I said, "Well, maybe you know this." And I did a Disney thing for them. One of the girls said, "Shut up!" <laughs> and the other girl, the other girl stepped back and she started to cry. Oh. She started to cry, and wow. I said, "What? What? I'm sorry. What?" And she said, "No." Oh, she said, it's just that voice always told me something wonderful was coming. Yeah. I would say to wow. my mom, come in here. He's talking to us. He's talking to us. She said, oh, my God. She had tears. That's I had tears. It was a real yeah. touching Man, moment. It really was. Amazing. It was really yeah. a touching moment. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I got a little low. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I do that. It's I do not that. the AC. I do that. That was... No, but we were talking earlier. You know, I'm in ten and a half years of, of Disney love. And, you know... We were talking about how you're a part of people's happiness, <coughs> special memories. They're ne- you're never not going to have a good time. Even if the kids get cranky and tired, yeah. you're never not going to have true. a good time That's true. having a Disney experience. Yeah. And so it's so wonderful to be a part <coughs> of that. 
It is. It's just a. It's a wonderful touchstone. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a. It's it's a wonderful touchstone for my career. And and again, if that's if that's the identity that I carry with me for the rest of my life, I wouldn't have it any it's other way. It's a huge one. It's, man. it's oh, beautiful. I mean, it's, just a... so, it's just so pure and so mm-hmm. and so innocent and so yeah. and so pleasure filled. You know yeah. that it's just yeah it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and to be really honest with you, man, it, 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 that was a, a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for anyone because there will never be another that guy. Doesn't seem because to be. trailers nowadays are like this summer. Yeah. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. It's That's like exactly so right. so you yeah. took that whole world and just devoured it and it's like whenever anybody thinks of a Disney trailer or a presentation, if you will, mm-hmm. Mark Elliott. That's what <laughs> yeah. they think. Without well, a doubt. Yeah, that was that was again just really, really good luck on my part. Mm-hmm. Really good luck. And it uh, Well we we hear from our fans all over, and you are definitely one that, I believe it's David in Canada. I think it was David in Canada who's been wanting to have you on the show D- so David badly. David is right there somewhere, um, so it better be David in Canada. <laughs> Otherwise, he's I going like, wait a David. minute, it wasn't um, me. <laughs> but it's also people in the U.S., in the U.K., all over. And the kind of overwhelming question, if we could, you know, cons- I kind of consolidated all of them, is, is always... How does Mark get that warm, buttery storyteller sound in the reeds? When you, how do you, you know, what? Give well, us the keys to the castle. Well, Mark. I, I, you the know, keys to the castle. Yeah. <laughs> you Here's know, the keys to my know car. <laughs> well, what those keys are. You know, to me, it's it's. You look at the words, and the words dictate exactly how they need to be said. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a direct message. You know, mm-hmm. magic, uh, special, uh, wonderful. Uh, they all they all tell you. Here's how I want to be said. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and if you if you just listen to that. And you go there, it's always a good place to start. Once in a while, if you do that kind of intuitively, once in a while, they will say, yeah, that was good. That was really nice. Could we try it with a little more energy? Or could we try it with a little less announcer? Or could we try it? Right. And, and, but just knowing the value of those words and the worth of those words and, and understanding they're what matter. They, they are what matters. Yeah. You yeah. don't. This doesn't, this doesn't matter. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really about the, the words and yeah. what it is. Exactly. That, yeah. The message that's, mm-hmm. that, that, you're, that you're trying to send. Uh, it's funny, though. Uh, when they re-released Bambi, uh, theatrically, and they hired me to come in and do the the, the, the trailers and, and things for the coming attractions. And I said, uh, I, I I got a cold, you guys. I said I really got a bad cold. Could we wait like a couple of days? I said, Ooh, we're really under the gun. We do, we just got this. So I said, okay, but I really don't sound good. And I went in, and it was you know. <laughs> coming soon, Bambi. And it was, all of a sudden, it was just this real warm kind of thing, and they're going, oh, oh, oh we didn't know you could do that, yeah. you know? And it was just because I had a cold. If you, yeah. if you, go, to, if you go to YouTube, and you yes. look up the, 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 the Bambi trailer, you will hear there's this guy wow. talking. It's, it's, it's different, but you can still tell it's you, but yeah. yeah. I know, we but, were listening to all of them. And a little I cough just in the like, background, too. Play <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's just asking for pity. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's just a pity me. It's a pity me cough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know something. That's that's very kind, Stacy, for you to, to 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 call that all those things that you called it. I don't know where that comes from. I think I would like to believe that that it comes from somewhere inside me that is mm-hmm. that that's kind of who I am. I would like to be that guy. I hope I am that guy mm-hmm. that you hear on those promos. Yeah, yeah, and you are. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's not. I mean, who walks through the door and and who you hear for me is is an alignment. I mean, yeah, I, I don't. It doesn't feel put on. No. no, the big reason why you know this wonderful magical thing comes out of you is because, like you said earlier, <clears throat> you love. Like you said, if that's all you you're going to be known for, man, yeah. then so be it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you love that. And I so, love and that I love comes the work. out in, in everything yeah. that you yeah. do. I love the work. Yeah, it's I, really I really, really cool. Do. So let me ask you this: well, so when you're doing like the trailers for Disney, right? Obviously, there's a director somewhere in the room, and and uh, were they guiding you towards this? thing that you did or was that something that you just did and they said like wow that's it we got it that's it's what we interesting want. chuck after all the years that i worked for them 
it got to the point where they didn't bother sending somebody to direct me. They mm. nobody came over because they just knew that I I, I understood. Yeah, uh, and there was they had the trust and boy, that's something that Stacy is really yes. rare. Mm -hmm. I mean, rare. you don't get that kind of that kind of uh, support and belief in he can do this. Yeah. I, he doesn't need to be directed. Yeah, yeah. and and he, they knew that I would be the first to say. I think we've got it, but let's try it a couple more times and see what else happens, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just do some tweaking and just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, accent certain words yeah. differently than, and, and so they knew that I would present them with a lot of things that they could make a choice mm -hmm. from, that I wouldn't just do one take and, and walk out and go, that's it. Fantastic. So there was, yeah, so there was, there was that level of trust and, and respect and, again, very important, very mm -hmm. important and very, very touching to me and one of the things that I remember most about, and I did love those people at Disney. I did. I really, I really enjoyed. Actually, I say at Disney, I rarely worked for Disney. Mm -hmm. I usually worked for uh, a company that that was actually doing the campaign. Right. And but uh, but occasionally some of the Disney people would be there, and I just I, I really liked them. Mm -hmm. I yeah. really liked them. I could yeah. see I could see why they were Disney people, and uh, again, not Playboy Channel people. I, you <laughs> <No>. know, they, <laughs> yeah. they, that's yeah. your next chapter. Yeah, this week, <laughs> my show to Playboy. Be Everybody. Video porn weekly, <laughs> and it'd be a whole different topic here. We're talking uh, moanovers today. Yeah, moanovers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this took a different turn than we anticipated. Right, yeah, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> On uh, that message. note, yeah. uh, well, you mentioned doing Lake Bell's amazing movie In a World mm -hmm. with our friends Joseph Briano and Mark Rao and Fred Malaman, of course. What? What, how did that come to you, and what was that experience like for you doing that? That was it was great fun, mm -hmm. great fun. I mean, it was. I never wanted to be an actor. I never aspired to that. I did do one play when I first came to L.A. I did one play. I was the host of a uh, of a, uh, a political talk show, and and it was uh, it was it was actually a fairly good show. It's called People's Choice, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a, it was a romantic comedy that was set in the world of politics, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was set up in three acts and the part of the show which was called People's Choice <clears throat> would be shown or would be acted out at the beginning of each of the three mm -hmm. acts mm -hmm. and what was said on that would then set in a, in motion the, the activity for the next for the next act it was right. pretty it was pretty cool but I never really wanted to do that and so when I found out that they were auditioning for uh, this movie I had no idea what it was I had no idea mm -hmm. they said they're looking for voiceover guys and so I uh, went to a, a place down on Venice Boulevard uh, to, to do an audition, and Lake was there, uh, Lake Bell, the director of the movie, and uh, uh, she was there, and I really liked her. And you know how that feeling mm -hmm. is when you see somebody for the first time, and you and you just go, "Yeah, this feels right. Mm -hmm. This yeah. feels good." Yeah. I've always heard that there's that that's because we've got like electrical currents in our mm -hmm. brain, yeah. and some sometimes you hit they, the same frequency. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, Absolutely. and and you just are very instantly yeah. very comfortable. Yeah. And conversely, you can meet people where you just go, "Ooh, ooh, mm -hmm. ooh, this, oh, yeah. yeah," and and uh, based on nothing other than just a feeling, and and that's what I that's what I've always heard. But anyway. Uh, there were a lot of guys there that day, and I didn't, frankly, didn't think I did a very good job. And I was really kind of surprised when mm -hmm. I got the call uh, that, uh, that that she, that she wanted me to come back in and read again. And I did go back in, and so the three of us wound up uh, doing the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, our stuff was pretty much done, with the exception of the thing over the opening credits in right. Joe's studio, right. uh, which was done on a separate day. Uh, most of our stuff was done in one day, mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't a situation. I got to tell you, I've always known I would not like to be an actor. That Why standing, standing around. around. Oh, oh my know. gosh. Yeah, let's, oh, let's do that again. Let's, you know. Uh, I know. It was, it was perfect. Around. Let's do that again. But just I the know. standing around, if it hadn't been, I think I'd put on four pounds at, at the craft <laughs> the tables. Crust, yes. <laughs> you know? Well, no, and here you come from promo and trailer that's like, bing, bam, boom, yeah. you're on to your next session, and you're like, it's been four yeah, hours exactly. and I'm yeah. still four in my Four hours. Show. I would have yeah. killed for it to be four yeah. hours. You know, yeah, it was it was a long day. Yeah. But we had a great time. Yeah, we and what really a great a movie. Time. And you guys were, it was such, that party scene stole it. Well, you stole know, that it. party scene, and, and I got to be honest about it. I, the funny thing about that party scene is, with the exception of what happened to Bell, uh, to Lake Bell at the end of the party scene, mm -hmm. uh, 
I didn't know quite what what the rest of it was for. I didn't know what. I mean, it, as I watched the movie and I loved it. Jeez, I love that movie. Yeah. I would have loved it if if I. Did you, you feel know. like fluff? Yeah. Did you feel like you were fluff, Mark? Yeah, a little. Oh, oh, a little. No. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, I, you I just, know what? It was just eye candy. You and Joe and Mark yeah, were just yeah. the eye candy. And at the end of it, it said in the credits, you know, Mark Elliott himself, Joe right. Cipriano himself, Mark yeah. Brow himself. Well, we never called each other by name in the movies. We never we never spoke our names to each other. Oh, you so, that's no, true. No, yeah. So it was kind of like that's interesting. Uh, You're but like, I like Cher, it. Madonna, and Beyonce. You don't that's even right. have to say it. Exactly. It's just, you that's just know. right. That, that's yeah, there's right. a big sign over your head. <laughs> or my uh, well, it was so great to see you all of you guys in it. It was that was fun. It was that a was great really movie. a good day. And you know the thing that's interesting about voiceover now, with the technology being what it what it is, yes. and and the fact that you don't really have to leave your house to do your work. Mm-hmm. I miss that social aspect of, of what we do. Yeah. Uh, I loved hanging out with in a studio. Course, you know, if I had yeah. if I didn't have something else to go do right away, mm-hmm. I'd just sit in the lobby and just wait because I knew yeah. somebody I knew yeah. was going to come in or somebody I wanted to yeah. know. And I, I really miss that. I think that that's one of the big, big, mm-hmm. big changes. And I and I think most of the other guys feel the same way. There was a company in Austin, Texas, that was doing a movie of uh, a documentary movie. Uh, it started out being about Don LaFontaine, and then when Don passed away, it became kind of a tribute to him. Mm-hmm. And it was called, it's almost embarrassing to say, but it was called The Voiceover Gods of Hollywood. <laughs> not my idea. Yeah. Not yeah, my yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway. That's right there with Death Car on the highway. <laughs> death Car on the freeway. <laughs> voiceover Gods of Hollywood. <laughs> Great double feature. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Great double feature. You would have really killed that promo, man. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so getting together with guys at that point in time, Andy Geller and guys that I hadn't seen for yeah. a very long time, and we all looked at each other and said, Miss you, yeah. miss you. It it, it it just that was always the fun of it to me. It mm-hmm. was like being in a fraternity, kind of that was yeah. that, uh, that was you know just a bunch of great guys. Mm-hmm. Just Absolutely. for the, uh, I mean, for uh, and I didn't expect it to be that way. I right. really truly expected right. that it would be so competitive, and that it would be so ruthless mm-hmm. that it would be an uncomfortable environment to be in with other people who needed the same who needed the same job that I mm-hmm. was going out yeah. after, yeah. Yeah. and it just never turned out that way. I mean, there were there were guys that you could kind of tell, they go, here, you got the uh, Mercury account, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yep. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's different. Are you going right? to plan to go yeah. on vacation yeah. anytime soon? Because yeah. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm not leaving town. Well, that's all we have for part one with Mark Elliott. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, we are. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you guys. We love you so much. Thanks for watching. And just remember... You You always have time for a little buzz. buzz.